It's a game where these young ball players have two things to do. One, of course, the, the, the battle between the All-Stars of the Public League and the Catholic League. And number two, probably most important, a chance to get a scholarship to go on to college. So it's going to be a good football game. And it's kind of an all dang zine type of matchup. The last time these players will really see each other as they go to different schools around the United States. That's amazing how you can mesh all these players together. I know when I played in a couple All-Star games, uh, you play against the guy all of a sudden uh, that you were you hated, you know, as an opponent. <laughs> now you're a teammate of him. So it's nice that these coaches can mesh them all together. Well, I'm glad to have you with us, and I'm also happy to have a gentleman who's on the field and going to be covering the sideline. Ted Albrecht, hello. Hello, Duane and Doug, and I'm down here with both head coaches from the Catholic League and the Public League, Frank Strocher from the Catholic League and Bill Harden. Doctor, you've been out of football now for 11 years. You work for the city in their, in their physical education department and health. We've got to tip your hat to you coming back in and trying to keep this game alive. Well, yes, it has been a long time, but you know, these young men have got my dander up, and we're going to take another one from the Catholic League tonight. Well, I know the record has been against you in the last uh, seven or so outings, but I think your defense is a little quicker than people can anticipate. They've got a lot of speed on that defense. Well, you're right. We have some outstanding young men on that team, and I'm not going to mention any names. I might forget a few, but uh, they are really tough defensively, and hopefully we'll be able to move the ball against that big Catholic line. Well, thank you, Coach, and we'll be talking to you a little later, and good luck out there. Thank and you. to my right, the head coach, Frank Schrocher, you've been around for a long time, a, a father of nine kids, you know, a Big Ten official. We can't say enough about the time you're putting into this game as well for these kids. Thank you, Ted. Uh, this game is something that means an awful lot to a lot of these young people. The most important thing is we hope that some of them can go on with their education. That's the reason we're behind it 150 percent is because if one young man gets an opportunity to go to school, as you know, Ted, the importance of it. That's right. And we're going to be with it all the way, and we hope that we can give the, your audience a super football game and hope for God none of the kids get hurt, and that's the main thing. That's right. Frank, we, we tip your hat, too. You, we know that you're the commissioner of the Catholic League and that you've worked very hard with, with the Catholic League and trying to put together a good team. You have 48-man squad, but this offensive line is probably the toughest part of your team. Yes. Uh, this year, I had a little a real quick story for you. We had two lines, right? They were both so equal, we had to play five-card stud to see who started. <laughs> so, as you know, as an offensive player, Coach, we got some great ones out there, and the game is won and lost right there. That's right, Frank, and thank you so much. You're we'll talk well. to you later, and good luck today. Same to you. Alrighty. Thank you, sir. Back upstairs at Dwayne and Doug. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right. Uh, Doug, what can a ball player do as far as his football career, which really is starting maybe for many of these players? This game is very important in this game as far as what can he do to impress me with the coaches or the scouts. What he has to do, Dwayne, is hustle. He has to go out in that field and he has to go out there and he knows he's going to make mistakes because it's hard to get the red together after two weeks. So that what, the, what the scouts look for is somebody's hustling, somebody that can make a big play. And usually if you're going out there putting out 100% all the time, they like that. And eventually, maybe the course of the football game, you're going to pick off an interception, you're going to run a long play, and you're going to do something to be outstanding. All right, Doug, looking forward to your analysis during the broadcast. Now let's go back onto the field and get ready for the kickoff. Tonight's All-Star Game between the Catholic League and the Public League is brought to you in part by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. The broadcast rights to this game have been granted to Sports Vision solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without the consent of Sports Vision is prohibited. And now, here's Doug Buffone to look at the Public League starting offense. The Public League starting offense lineup is as follows. Tight end, number 87, Alan Washer, 6'3", 205 from Lane. At left tackle, number 71, Patrick Dean. 6'2", 230 from Simeon. At left guard, number 54, Clance Hayes, 6'1", 240 from Marshall. At center, number 50, Angelo Junkins, 5'11", 230 from Julian. And at right guard, number 61, Joe Bilak, 6'1", 195 from Bogan. And at right tackle, number 70, Walt Bresky, number 6'3", 245 from Lane. And at strong end, number 80, Warren Calhoun, 6'1", 185 from King. And in the backfield, at running back, number 46, Jimmy Spragan, 6'195 from Robeson. At the other running back, number 33, Jack Cochran, 5'11", 175 from Gage Park. And at flanker, number 93, Andrew Jocelyn, 6'1", 200 from Phillips. And at quarterback, number 11, Jamie Barton, 5'11", 170 from Tilden. Okay, now the players are on the field and ready to go. 
And we are ready for the kickoff. That is Smith, Franklin, and Biondo back in kick return formation for the Catholic League. Kicking off for the Public League is Willie Trezek. He's out of Kennedy High School. He's a good kicker. This fellow Trezek played four positions, including quarterback at Kennedy High School. And here he kicks off to start the eighth annual Public League Catholic League game on a warm night in Chicago. And it goes into the end zone. And so the Catholic League in red will take over Doug Buffon first and 10 on the 20-yard line. Super, super kick the way. And that ball went right out of the end zone. It, uh Got a lot of height, and Trezak really got up underneath the ball. We have some wind out there, though. The wind caught it a little, but it was a great kick. So the Catholic League, as you see, the offensive line for the Chicago Catholic League. And they are going with Foy, Segru, Wolf, Fuss, Danone, Jerome, and uh, Smith. Now this is the south side offensive line. All south side kids. And the first play is a running play. Carrying the ball is big Andre McIntyre, making Tyrone Smith the tailback, who brings it up for a gain of, oh, let's call it uh, five yards, up just shy of the 25-yard line. So the Catholic League comes up with a five-yard gain. There you see Todd Bonetto out of Weber High School going to the University of Dubuque in Iowa. He is the field general for the Catholic League calling the signals. And they're in the I formation, and that's where they'll be for most of the night. So Bonetto calling the signals and gives to the tailback again. And he comes up over the 25-yard line to about the 27. And Smith is tackled by Fred Davis, left tackle out of Shures. The way they're coming out of that I formation, they're using that I formation because using that big by the back, Andre McIntyre, who's making that big block, the initial block. Incidentally, McIntyre's going to Michigan where he's become a middle linebacker. He's at 240 pounds, so he's a big back. As we look at Bonetto, we now have third down and three for the Catholic League at their own 27-yard line. And this time, 92, Vincent Tolbert, the left end out of Robson, stopped the play. You see the Public League very excited in stopping Smith. And so far, the Catholic League hasn't done anything fancy, Doug. Frank Schultz just took the football out of the I formation. We're trying to run it right down to the Public League's throat, but they came up with that big play and had him short. Again, coming out of that I formation with that big fullback blocking, just couldn't get the first down. Tyrone Smith, though, the, the tailback, has plenty of speed, so maybe we'll see him start going outside more as the game goes on, Dwayne. There are five Robeson players in the starting Public League defense to the Catholic League going into punt formation. The kicker is Joe Malkowski out of Mont Carmel, and he gets a wobbly kick that bounces, and they watch it roll, and it's down on the 40-yard line. And downing the ball is number 84 for the... Chicago Catholic League will check the numbers as it is Tim Murney out of St. Rita who down the ball. So the Public League will get possession for the first time. Nothing, nothing early in the game in the Catholic League and the Public League. Obviously a lot of uh, debate over the years as to the relative merits of these teams. The Catholic League has dominated in prep bowl competition, but in this game the Public League has won two out of seven. From the 40-yard line now, and looking at the quarterback, there was a question as to who the starter would be. It is Ricky Velez out of Lane Tech as they run a play that goes nowhere in that Catholic League defense. Stop the Public League for no gain. Make it second and ten in the fourth. Again, the Public League coming out of that running formation, giving to Jack Cochran and decide they're going to try to run that football too. But I think before the day is over with or the evening is over with, we're going to see that ball go more in the air from the Public League. As you take a look at the Catholic League defense, a strong defense, many of those players going into Big Ten competition. And here, a close look at Ricky Belez out of lane 10 at quarterback. And Belez on some play action throws, and it's incomplete, in and out of the hands of Jimmy Spragans of Robeson, as the incomplete pass brings up a third and 10 for the Public League on its own 40-yard line. Well, that time, Velez decided to go with that play-action play and try to pull all those linebackers in and try to hit the back on coming across the middle of the field, but he absolutely just dropped the football. It was a pretty good pass. So we come up with a third and 10 now. Spragans comes out, and cool breeze Carl Boyd, worry number 26, goes into the halfback position to join fullback Jack Cochran. We're looking for Cochran to carry the ball in many situations tonight. He's a big man out of Lane Tech. But a third and 10. They run out of an offset alignment in the backfield. As Velez to throw, heavy pressure, throws a nice spiral downfield. It was intended for Warren Calhoun of King High School to split end, but out of bounds, and so it'll be punt formation for the Chicago Public League. Talking to the coaches before the game, they liked Calhoun. They thought all the two weeks he practiced here with the Public League had great hands. They also liked a tight end washer. 
So Velez is going to try to find Washer Calhoun as many times as he can. This is the punter, number 83. That's Dan Donegan. He's a big one, six feet three out of Bogan High School. And he is going to Northeastern University. We'll try to give you as many of these colleges where these young men are, are going as we can. Some of them are undecided. So going back deep for the Catholic League are Todd Biondo and Mike Marinko. Beyondo out of David Sal Marinko out of Gordon Tech, the left footed kicker, and he kicked a bad one. I don't think a hand got in that ball, did it, Doug? It went out of no, bounds at about the 35. He just shanked it. He didn't get his foot on it and shanked outside. All right, with a score, Public League nothing, Catholic League nothing. We'll be right back. All right, as we come back now, the Catholic League has run a couple of plays for a total of three yards as the Public League defense has looked surprisingly strong so far, Dr. Buffon. Dwayne, they're still hitting that middle off that I formation. You'd have to figure sooner or later they're going to have to pull the plug, what they call, in other words, do a play-action play because the public league is just jamming it up in the middle. We have a new tailback for the Catholic League, Joe Beninardi out of Brother Rice. He also can play fullback. Smith is in the lineup also, so Beninardi and Smith are the running backs. That's Beninardi, the up man, number 38. And here's a hand to Smith. And Smith picking his way through the defense and makes it to midfield. And he showed good moves that time as he shows good dexterity out to the 50-yard line. First down. Again, Tyrone Smith coming off a little of a delay right here. Just sits back here and waits for the ball, picks it up, gets the hole, and look at the outstanding speed. He hits to the outside, makes that good cut, breaks up Hill for their first down. Good size back to Andy, 6'1", 182 pounds out of De La Salle. Mark Smith out of Robeson was on the tackle, and he combined with the free safety, William Ballard out of Corliss. All right, now it's a first down in midfield for the Chicago Catholic League. They're in a slot right. Smith again. Smith coming through the middle, and he had good second effort, as it was uh, Bettinardi that time on the carry for about four yards to the 46-yard line. What they're doing is they're switching Bettinari and Smith in and out, and they're using the big fullback, McIntyre, as the blocking back, and they're still coming from that eye formation. And they're still trying to pound up that middle. All right, you see Pete Thanis on the right there. He is the head coach at Mendel Catholic, and he's in charge of the running backs for the Chicago Catholic League and has to be happy with the last couple of plays. Now to second down and about six from the 46-yard line of the Public League and the Catholic League running eye for the flanker right. And carrying the ball is Tyrone Smith, and he brings it down to the 45-yard line for only a gain of one. The young man from De La Salle who is headed to the University of Wyoming. Doug Buffon. Tyrone Smith, a good size. And sometimes you take a look at that number 40, the way, and you think of another guy, Gail Sears. <laughs> yes. Well, he went west, too. Not quite as far west as Mr. Smith Kansas. is going. But we wish all of these fellows the best of luck when they go to college. Now it's an eye formation. Wide receivers to either side as it's Williams to the right and Bowditch to the left. This is a third down play, and the Catholic League with McIntyre, the big fullback from Mendel Catholic, trying to run, and he got nowhere. He ran into Coleman and Eric Morgan, the right tackle out of Lane Tech. I believe McIntyre didn't get a clean hand off that time. There was a little jam up in the backfield. But it's, it's amazing, McIntyre running a fullback, such a big fullback, yet again going to play linebacker for Michigan, a middle linebacker. That's Bill Harden in the middle of the picture, just backing off to the right there. He's the director of public education or physical education for Chicago Public Schools, head coach of the public league team for this game. Now a low snap on the punt, and here is the punt. And good coverage by the Catholic League. As making the return was Clarence Ford of Collins High School after that kick by Joe Malkowski. And so, let's go down to Ted. Are we on? Todd, hi, this is Ted Albrecht of the sidelines. We got Todd Bonetto down here, the starting quarterback for this Catholic League team. The first drive, we got nothing. You came up two inches short, and the second time, you got something going. Yeah, we're moving the ball. The line's very good, but... We just have to get a little bit more out of the line, and the backs have to move a little faster. And by the couple more, couple more series, we'll be right down there then. Tyrone Smith's a big fullback, isn't yes, he? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's, he's a halfback. He's a halfback. Yes, well, he's, he's really run that ball pretty well. Yes, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Todd. Come on, Ted. You've been around know the difference between a fullback and a halfback. <laughs> Jack Cochran of Lane Tech went nowhere on the Public League's first play from scrimmage after the Catholic League got great position. Great field position on downfield coverage on that kick. So it'll be second and 10 for the public league on their own 10. Nothing, nothing. First quarter, about midway through the quarter. 71. Coming out there is Patrick Dean of Simeon. Left tackle. Calling a signals 
Velez. And carrying the ball is Jimmy Spragans out of Robeson. Spragans running to the right. He didn't find very much room over there. As Eddie Gannon, now in the game at nose guard from St. Rita, number 65, made the tackle. There's Spragans out of Robeson. Robeson had a good year. They went to the finals of the state class 5A before losing to Guilford High School of Rockford. And that game, Doug, went down to the last minute at Dyke Stadium. What do you think of these state playoffs? A lot of fun, aren't they? Oh, they are. And I love high school football. You see the excitement and enthusiasm out there, and it's just something to watch. Oh, it's always been enjoyable for me to cover, and I know as a guy who appreciates all kinds of football, I knew you'd enjoy this one. Third down and nine. And now the field opens up a bit for number 26, Cool Breeze Carl Boyd out of Julian High School. And he is going to be short of the first down, bringing up a fourth down situation for the public league. The ball on the 13-yard line. So, Doug, they only picked up three yards in three plays. What they did on a third down situation, they thought maybe they were expecting a pass. So they went with Boyd, who has extreme good speed. They thought they could get him to the outside with the guards pulling, but a good force and a good, good tackle stopped them from getting the first down. So they're in a punting formation now. Pulling there was 61, Joe Bilak out of Bogan. We want to try to get as many of these youngsters mentioned on this telecast that we can. Uh, Donegan is really hoping for a better punt this time after he shanked the last one. Back, oh, it's a low snap, but he coolly gets a beautiful kick away. Look at that kick and a good fielding job on the, by Marinko of Gordon Tech. And now it goes to Biondo. Marinko got the ball and pitched to be and got it to Biondo and they brought it back after that tremendous kick that had to sail close to 50 yards. Little razzle dazzle there and he handed it off and Marinko by the way is going to Princeton and a good friend of mine who's coaching up here. Here's the razzle dazzle. It's a little play trying to throw off that uh, coverage team but couldn't do it. Marinko I said before is going to Princeton a good friend of mine Maxie Bond is going to be the head coach up here this year. Oh Maxie eh? Yeah. Well. No, he won't work. You ain't gonna have to no, we, yeah. All right. Okay. Now, line of scrimmage is a 40-yard line. And here comes the workhorse running back, Tyrone Smith. And Vincent Tolbert came in to make the hit and got the ball. So the public league is excited as they get the fumble recovery on the Catholic League 45-yard line. And the public league gets a big break after they had that poor field position earlier. This is what the public league needed right here. They got this play to come in. He's holding that football out. Tyrone's holding that football out. Gets a couple whacks in there. The ball scored loose and public league gets it. This is the play they needed to turn this game around because they are the underdogs, no question about it. And a big play like that could set this public league on fire. Well, they, this is quite an interesting game here. Battle of field position so far. We've had so far, but a lot of excitement. <laughs> Youngsters excited. 6.24 to play in the first quarter, no score. Pro set, wide split in the back. In a quarterback now. Running with the ball is Velez, and Velez ankle tackled by 45. Joe Jenkins, strong side linebacker out of St. Rita. He's going to Ohio State. There he is, 45 in red. Again, Velez made a bad situation into a good situation. Was trapped back there, couldn't find anybody open. Good coverage by the Catholic League. Why did he decide to run it and picked up a couple yards on it? Again, Jenkins making that tackle. Fine linebacker, like you said, going to Ohio State. We have a flag on the play of our first penalty of the day, and we have a substitution at quarterback as Jamie Barton of Tilden replaces Ricky Velez of Lane Tech for the public league. Wasn't he the one who did that such a great job against Deerfield, Dwayne? Yes. Tilden played. Jamie Barton had a great day. Illegal use of the hands against the public league puts the ball back in midfield. Yes, Tilden scored one of the biggest upsets in recent high school football, Doug, when they went up to the North Shore and beat Deerfield High School. And then later in the next game were eliminated in the Class 5A playoffs a year ago. Well, you beat Paul Adams. You beat a good coach. First and 15 now in midfield. Direct handoff and a big hit. As carrying the ball was Spragans. And he was wrapped up as Dan, Dan Fa, make it Galetti, Dan Galetti out of Loyola High School, number 60 in dark. And they do hit, and that's what the Catholic League is known for. Really that time, the, the linebacker usually do, they call a nose tackle. You stick that nose right into that sternum of that back, and you hit him <laughs> square up, and boy, and he just did it. Well, give a yard for Spragans, and he worked for every inch, didn't he? <laughs> he, earned, he earned that yard. Second and 14 in the 49-yard line of the Catholic League. If you have any friends who are football fans, bring him in. This will be a good ball game. And here, rolling right. Barton throwing long downfield and diving, but not coming up with the ball. 
the wide receiver I believe it was Joslin make it Warren Calhoun of King High School and you see Biondo who was on the coverage Todd Biondo. Biondo did an excellent job that time coming up to deflecting that football almost an interception enough to knock it down. Good job. Nothing nothing. 522 to play in the first quarter and after getting the break on the fumble recovery. Well the public league has gone backward here it is now third and 14 in the public and the Catholic League 49 yard line and flags all over the place. It looks like we're going to have a procedure call and Spragans catching the ball in the flat is brought down on the near sideline. Jimmy Spragans 46 and you see 42 in on the play Joe Melkowski out of Carmel the short side cornerback. But let's watch and see. Yes it's a legal motion against the public league. So that great kick by Donegan and then the fumble recovery Doug but then uh, Catholic League uh, has done everything right the public league everything wrong. Can't seem to get anything mustered on that offense again too looking at the public league they're going to depend on big plays the way and then right now you watch what's going to happen if their touchdowns are going to come not from sustained drives but from big plays bombs. Well we see the new quarterback Barton and he can throw obviously got a good arm. He, he also can run and I saw that, that last time he threw the football and he's the type of ball player to give him some room he probably run for 30 40 yards. All right that'll provide an interesting dimension. There's our crowd tonight at Hanson Stadium. Come on over. It's only two dollars to get in. We'll be back in a moment. Well we're going to stay here. We're going to stay here now. That's not uh, break yet. Are we still on. All right fine. We're still here. We're going to break after this next down. Fourth down. And back to kick is down again. He shanked one and then he booted one out of sight. And here he kicks one toward the left sideline. And it looked like he might have been angling it over there, Doug. Anyway, it went out of bounds between at about the 30 yard line. We'll be right back after this message. All right, Dwayne Dow and Doug Buffon, along with Pitt Albrecht, who's paroling the, the patrolling the sidelines. And it's nothing, nothing in the first quarter between these two arch rivals and the years roll back when you think about the Chicago Public League and the Catholic League and the great crowds and the great excitement over the years. Now the Catholic League with possession again. Ted Albrecht standing by in the sidelines will get him after this play hopefully. And here they run the ball. Coming up with it is Smith and here's Ted. I've got Todd Biondo here. Great uh, trick uh, punt return there just at the beginning of the uh, fourth qu first quarter. Yeah, I just tried to, you know, make the best of it. I seen him coming outside. He was leaning towards the right, and I just thought I'd cut in, cut in on him, and then I went against the grain. Yeah, too bad they fumbled, though, and you had to go back out in the field, right? Yeah, it's pretty tough. You also made a great a great break on this ball here, almost on this interception here. Yeah, I thought I had, but I lost my footing. But the first thing, the main objective to me is um, in, uh, break up the pass. That's great. Good luck, Todd. Keep it up. Thanks a lot. Good second effort by Andre McIntyre. As actually it was Joe Bettinardi out of Brother Rice High School banging off bodies and coming up over the 40 out to the 41 yard line. Again, Joe Bettinardi coming out at eye formation. He gets that good block by the fullback, the inside, but a second effort right here. That's what did it. That's what picked up the yard. Showed real good quickness that time. All right. Joe Bettinardi out of Brother Rice High School. He's going to St. Joseph's of Rensselaer, Indiana. Now, that is a first down on the 41 yard line for the Chicago Catholic League. They run a slot to the right. And whistles stop play before quarterback Todd Bonetto can retreat. You see the flag in the middle of your picture. And the referee's Gil Marchman out of the Big Ten. He looks loose, doesn't he? All Big Ten officials are loose. <laughs> There's an illegal procedure call in the Catholic League. It's an all Big Ten crew to give these youngsters a little taste of what they might expect from the officials when many of these players go on to the Big Ten this fall and other colleges. We'll have to keep Frank Strosha off the field. But he's out there yelling at the refs sometimes. Yes, there he is, head coach of the Chicago Catholic League and the commissioner of the Catholic League. Fine gentleman. What a, a man who really loves high school sports. Frank Strosha and a few of his assistants. Dwayne, the Catholic League. Catholic team has yet gone into the air and uh, sooner or later Frank's going to put that ball up. Huh? Well we'll see. Ball in the 36 yard line high formation. It's now first and 15. Bonetto and again 
He gives it a tailback, and it's Tyrone Smith. And coming in to make the tackle on Smith was a strong safety from Robeson, Mickey Pruitt, along with 19 Victor Smith out of Simeon. But that running attack is working. Again, all that was from the eye formation, it's a delay. See Tyrone sit back there and wait. Everyone's thinking past. It opens up. Again, this kid has some speed and has size. Right here, missed tackle, power. Picks up a lot of yardage just off a simple delay play. That's twice they've run it and twice they've been successful with it. We saw his fellow back, 46 and dark, Andre McIntyre, get out and throw a block, which I know coaches like to see. Second and one from midfield. No score late in the first quarter. And here, banging down for the first down. And it is Bonetto. As Bonetto comes up with that first down yardage, picking up three yards on that dive through the middle. And the ball is... On the 47-yard line of the Public League, first down Catholic League. Again, you almost have to figure to Frank Strosha's philosophy is maybe try to wear this Public League down because he'll bring his second offensive team in, his offensive line in the second quarter, and just keeps banging at him from that eye formation. Smith and Williams, two receivers, go out of the picture to the left as you look at the young man from Weber High School, Todd Bonetto. And he gives to Smith, and Smith is snowed under. 92, Vincent Tolbert, the left end, who early recovered the fumble, stopped the running back from De La Salle in the Catholic League after just a short gain down to the 44-yard line. There's Tolbert out of Robeson. Again, there are five defensive starters out of Robeson in this game. The team that finished second in the state in Class 5A. Gordon Tech won the prep bowl a year ago, beating Julian. St. Rita out of the Catholic League made the playoffs. So did Carmel. Now he has second down and eight, just inside the 45-yard line of the Public League. As Bonetto gives inside to Beninardi. And Beninardi carries the ball for precious little yardage as James Turner, now at middle guard out of Fenger, made the tackle. Again, eye formation. What they're doing is fake to the strong side, bringing Beninardi back to the weak side, hoping that trap would have worked, but it didn't. He picked up only a yard or two. So good Joe, call, though. Very good call. Joe Beninardi out of Brother Rice. Getting a lot of activity here early in the game. Third down and seven. Ball on the 43-yard line of the Public League. Catholic League out of the eye with the wide receivers to either side. And here on an inside handoff and a big run up the middle for Tyrone Smith. And he gets a first down to the Public League 35-yard line. The strong safety Mickey Pruitt of Robeson on the tackle. Tyrone Smith. Looking good, he's going to Wyoming, as we mentioned before. He's six feet, 190. Again, Dwayne are using that same play from that I formation. It's a delay, just a simple delay from the I formation. Tyrone sits back there, gets the handoff, the hole opens up, and he with his speed and size, he picks up that first down. Now, with the ball on the 36-yard line of the Public League, the Catholic League of first and 10, as we get a good scrimmage line, eyes view, and Ben and Artie fumble the ball. It's loose, and it appears the Public League is on it. It's still loose. They're still scrambling for it. Let's see. And the way Tolbert comes out of there would appear the Public League has it, and the officials do indicate that it's a recovery for the second time by the Public League. 25 came up with the ball. Mickey Pruitt out of Robeson High School. He's going to Colorado. Again, he had some running room this time. Bettinari just comes in, and he gets hit. Just drops the football. Mickey Pruitt, the ball squirting around, and finally Mickey Pruitt comes up with it. You can see the turnover there. Catholic All-Stars have two turnovers on two drives. And the, the public, the public All-Stars have stopped both drives for the Catholics. So last year, the Catholic League won this game 28 to nothing. Public League is coming out here, Doug, like they didn't want that to happen this year. They're fired up. They're making things happen out there. From the 31-yard line, the line of scrimmage, it is Jamie Barton long downfield. What a catch by Warren Calhoun at the 15-yard line. That's a oh, call. that ball had to travel 65 yards in the air or 60 yards. That's what we were talking about before, the long play, the big one. That's they're working in practice. They're working on Calhoun to go deep and Jamie Barton's arm to go deep. You'll see him do that rollout now. All he does is come to the weak side, the rollout wakes. Pulls up and fires that football. Great arm. Calhoun with his speed down the sidelines. In fact, Barton overthrew him just a tad. And Calhoun goes up for that great catch. And I tell you, he'd be 
beat one of the best defensive backs in all of America in Tom Powers out of Mont Carmel is going to your alma mater, University of Louisville. Tom That's Powers going to Louisville, right? Big, big defensive back, 195 pounds. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Nothing, nothing will return to Hanson Stadium in just a moment. All right, thank you, Dick Gonski. We start play now in the second quarter from the 15-yard line. And here the public league is Fragans running wide, trying to turn the corner, and he gets down to the 10-yard line. <coughs> Let's go down to Ted Albrecht. Hold on to those high lines, Jimmy. I have Vincent Tolbert with me. I want everyone to know about this man. I saw him play in the prep bowl game against Mount Carmel from Brobson, the fine player, and you, and, you caused uh, a fumble early in the game. Channel. Yeah, they were trying to, I waited on the play. They was veering off tackle. They was trying to let me overrun the play, and I waited on the back. I got a head up hit on him, and he let the ball go. You're doing a good job. I understand you want to go to junior college and continue your athletics, right? Yeah, really. I'm not really worried about the athletic, athletic part. I'm trying to get an education. Well, Vincent, that's great. We'd love to hear that, and keep it up. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Back upstairs. All right. And we uh, now have a flag on that last play. And again, it's going to go against the public league, Doug Buffon. And the big walk off here, back outside the 25-yard line of the 26. So they're a holding call mm -hmm. against the public league, and they're going to call it first and 21. First and 21, back at the 26-yard line of the Catholic League as the public league loses some yardage there. Let's see if Jamie Bard comes back, comes back out throwing again and either running that football on a rollout or tossing that big one to Calhoun or Washer. Joslin of Phillips, flank left, Calhoun split right. First and 21, play action for Barton. Big rush, throws toward the end zone, and narrowly, oh, Calhoun went up, and the ball went out of his hands on some good coverage by the Catholic League. And 31 on defense. Begin the play Marinko. action play right here. All he does is roll out, waiting. He's, he's looking for Calhoun, Dwayne. He wants him. He's his main man. He's going to throw to him. He thinks that maybe Calhoun can make this catch. Perfect spiral, by the way. Look at this. Goes up where it almost does it, but good coverage. Well, Barton is going to be playing for a good college coach. He's going out to the University of Utah, where he'll play for Chuck Stobart, who had some excellent teams at the University of Toledo and beat a great San Jose State team in the California Bowl a couple of years ago. There's a look at Mike Marenko out of Gordon Tech who saved the day for the Catholic League there. Second and 20. A pass in the flat to Spragans. Spragans doesn't have any help up front and he's tackled at the 24-yard line of the Catholic League. And so they've only picked up a couple of yards in two plays and set penalty bringing up a third down at about 18. Super play by Bill Schnorr because if that tackle wasn't made, Spragans would have probably taken that in for a touchdown. What it was was a simple screen. He started to roll out to the weak side, sent Spragans all the way across to the wide side of the field. What happened was the offensive lineman didn't get set up well enough. Schnorr smelled it out and made the tackle. All right. Schnorr is out of Weber. As you see, the public league huddling. Out they come, big number 70. Coming out onto the line is Noah Butch Bresky out of Lane Tech. There he is, bottom left corner of your picture, and they're 92. One of the defenders for the Catholic League. They get a long pass toward the end zone. The closest man to the ball was Mike Flannery of St. Lawrence High School, the wide side cornerback. And a look at Barton. Big Utah fans, they love wide open football and that whack at Western Athletic Conference. So I'm sure he'll have a good chance to excel at the University of Utah. We have now a timeout on the field called by the Public League. And so we'll take this break. It is still nothing to nothing. And we'll be back after this message. As we look at the Public League head coach, Bill Harden, Director of Physical Education for Chicago Public Schools, he is what a coaching background in high school football around the nation. Dr. Bill, a fine gentleman. Always doing a lot to better the public schools in their athletic programs. And the scene here at Hanson Stadium on a warm night, Doug Buffon. Warm night, but a good night for football. Let's take a look at some of these stats, Dwayne. The, the Catholic League has 76 yards rushing, whereas the public league has two. But the difference, though, on the other, other side of the coin is the passing. The public league has thrown the football for 61 yards. In fact, uh, it's three out of six completions, 61 yards for Barton, whereas the Catholic League has not thrown the football as of yet. 
And the one big pass for 53 yards has put the Catholic Public League into Catholic League territory where they have since bogged down. Now it is fourth and 18 for the Public League on the Catholic League 24 yard line. Jamie Barton out of fourth and 18 and they're going for it. Barton looking, throwing. Down to the wall, and they say touchdown. The officials indicate touchdown for Alan Washer. That's the other man. Tack. That's the other guy he likes. That's the other guy. All week, the big tight end, Alan Washer. What a clutch play, Doug. It was fourth and 18. It's kind of plays you love to see. Again, too, with that great quickness of Barnes, he sets up and fires that football. That one ball throws a rope right on the mark. The big tight end gets his body in front of it, bowls everybody over, and goes in for the score. Again, too, we said before, coming into the football game, the public league needs big plays, long plays, and that's what they're doing. Well, crowd-pleasing offense. Brian Coe of St. Rita, Mike Marenko of Gordon Tech were both on him, but the big man just pulled his way in. Interesting that Washer was primarily a wide receiver at Lane Tech, and here in this All-Star game, he is a tight end. Now they're going for the extra point. Trezek of Kennedy High School to kick. And it's blocked! As booming through is Mike Flannery of St. Lawrence High School to block the kick. I've never seen a kick blocked that quickly. Again, let's take a look at this touchdown again. Barton Toos getting back to very, look how quick he sets up. Very quick set up, then fires that football, that rope. Now watch his reaction, he knows he's right on target. A big tight end, Washer picking it up and going for the score. The drive was 68 yards in five plays, one minute and 58 seconds. So you know they're going for those 15, 16 yard around. plays. Well, the starting quarterback and washer are teammates, Ricky Velez, and there is the man from Tilden, Jamie Barton, throwing to Alan Washer. So that was a south side to north side hookup, right? Civil War unites. Yes. So the public league. I would I think it's safe to say that the public league always the underdog or in recent years the underdog in this game but certainly with a crowd pleasing offense and that big 53 yard pass play Doug certainly set it up as Barton showed what a great army had and what a catch by Calhoun. Now let's go to Ted Albrecht. I've got Jamie Barton with me. I saw you play Deerfield up there in the first round of that playoffs. You're doing it here tonight. You're over 80 yards. You're four for seven. Jamie you're a great athlete. Keep it up. huh? Yeah I'm trying real hard. See the Catholic League and beat the public league three years straight. Like, and we played them in a baseball game, and we won the first game and lost the second game 19 to nothing. So I figure I owe the public league something by beating the Catholic League here. You can play baseball too. Yeah, I was all city in baseball too. What can't you do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you high jump? And you probably got a lot no. of girlfriends too, right? No, I don't have too many girls. Well, I don't have one thing's for sure, you're a serious football player and a great athlete. We wish the best. You're going to Utah, right? Right. Okay, back upstairs. Okay, Ted. There's a kickoff and the return. And up to about the 29-yard line. See, for Jamie, the Catholic League goes Paul Franklin of the Gordon Tech. Jamie's pumped up. You can tell that uh, they want a piece of that Catholic team. Yeah, there's a rivalry here. No doubt about that. These youngsters want to beat each other. And it's great sporting competition. As we take a look at the Catholic League, he is still very early in the second quarter. Catholic League trailing 6 0. Public League already has scored more points. They scored all of last year and they were shut out. Now, Todd Bonetto under center. And hurtling forward is number 21, Curtis Thomas, out of Mendel Catholic. Thomas getting the call and he goes in a tailback for Tyrone Smith. There he is. Kurt Thomas out of Mendel. Definitely nothing complicated about that Catholic offense. Same formation, I formation, just different ball players that time. If you tell back, Kurt Thomas handled the football. They're still using the big man, McIntyre, the lead blocker, fullback. Top of your screen is flanker Eric Geiger. On second down, second and ten. Pass complete. And the tight end are making 85, Daryl Smith. Out of De La Salle High School, he's going to Drake. Made a good catch from Bonetto. Daryl Smith looking good in that sideline pattern, Doug. Again, the, the first pass thrown by the Catholic League. We'll see what happens right here. Go to play action. Very good call because since you've been running the football so much, go back and hit Smith on an out pattern to the sidelines. Makes the catch. Picks up some good yards. Makes a third and short. Third and less than a yard. Coming in to make the tackle was Brian Bates of Robeson. Cornerback was going to Drake. 
Third down and a yard to go just shy of the 40. They try to run it for the first down. As Curtis Thomas back in the lineup, does he have enough yardage? The officials come in and the referee, Gil Marchman of the Big Ten indicates first and 10 for the Catholic League at the 41 yard line. Timmy Spencer comes in at right cornerback on a ropes and for the public league. And Catholic League trailing six to nothing. Let's go the line of scrimmage, the 42 yard line, first and 10. Todd Bonetta. And the public league does it again. It was Mickey Pruitt out of ropes and the strong safety. Who came, who shot through Doug. Well, Mickey, that cornerback that time waited and timing was very perfect. What he does as a cornerback, he had a burst. He burst on the football, timed it perfectly, stepped in front of the receiver, made the interception before going out of bounds. Tremendous play by Pruitt. He's going to Colorado too, I think. Hey, he looked like an NFL strong safety on That's that That's how one. you play him in the NFL, right? <laughs> This game is getting exciting. It's three turnovers now for the, the public league has come up against the Catholic League. And that's been the significance of this game. So happy that executive producer Jack Jacobs in the Sports Vision decided to make arrangements with the schools to put this game on for all of Chicago on Sports Vision. Ball on the 47-yard line. Dick Gonskis back in our studio today. My good pal, one of the best. And after that run by the public league, let's go down to Ted. I've got Mickey Pruitt here, another ropes and player, another player that was in that prep bowl game. A great break on the ball for the interception, Mick. Well, I, we had a man-to-man -man call, and I, um, I, my man did a little corner, and I just read the quarterback eyes, and he threw it, and I just called well, You made a great job. And, Mickey, where are you going to school? You, the University of Colorado. Well, good luck to you over there. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you bet. Okay, and fine coverage by Brian Stipe and our fine crew on the Sports Vision telecast as Big Jack Cochran of Lane Tech finds the going tough. Cochran's going to the University of Minnesota. Eddie Gannon made the tackle, the nose guard from St. Rita. Ball is on the 45-yard line of the Catholic League, and that uh, gain by Cochran makes it third and two. I talked to Jack Cochran before the football game, and he is a stout, strong-looking football player, and right away I knew he was a fullback. Those fullback had the has that look in her eyes and on those big broad shoulders and big legs. Indeed. Public League now on a third and two for the Catholic League 45. Early in the second quarter, the Public League leads it six to nothing. Quick pitch, incomplete, and good coverage by the Catholic League on the far side of the field as the pass was intended for Calhoun. And there you see 41 in dark. Mike Marinko of Gordon Tech was on the coverage. And so the special teams come on. Catholic League has gone with about 50 players throughout their two weeks of training. Public League started with 105 players and actually had to make a cut down to 70. Well, Coach Harden said he wouldn't really cut anybody. He said he could suit up and he made them all practice and 94 of them now are suited up out there. <laughs> That's a bunch. So Donegan, who has shanked a couple, surrounding one booming 50-yard kick. And Donegan, on a, after a good rush, gets a fair kick away down to the 20-yard line, and the fair catch is made by Todd Biondo out of De La Salle. And so the Catholic League will get the ball when we come back. Hope you're enjoying it. Public League leads six to nothing, and we'll be back. All right, Wayne Dow, Doug Buffon, and Ted Albrecht at Hanson Stadium. And we have Catholic League in possession on their own 21-yard line. As we have a new quarterback in the game for the Catholic League, and he decides to run the ball. Mickey Pruitt made the tackle on Brendan McCormick out of De La Salle High School. Ted Albrecht. Ted? I've got two great ones here. The first guy that set up that touchdown is Warren Calhoun. Warren, what'd you run? I ran a fly on this title right there. Was there any particular defense that you faced? Right, they were playing the man-to-man -man coverage on me. Man-to-man. -man. That was a great catch. It set up the touchdown. Then we go over here to the man that caught it. He did a super job, Thank a great you, catch. Thank you. What was the pattern that you ran? And a flag pattern. A flag pattern? It was the man-to-man, -to -man too. Alan, where are you going to school? Uh, College of DuPage, junior college. Good luck Alan. to you. Thanks a lot. Back upstairs, two great ones. Yes, sir. Calhoun and Washer, they did very well. And now we have a... What happened? A turnover here, Doug. Turnover, number three right. for the Catholic League. McCormick fumbled. I think the snap looked like to me, and they come up with the turnover number four, actually, I think, for the public league. He fumbled the snap. That's what he did. The snap was fumbled. 
Public League picked it up. Well, that was only McCormick's second play from scrimmage in the game, Doug. In the first play, he ran a play action and ran the football. And talking to uh, Frank Stroch before the game, McCormick loves to run that ball. He can run it. That time, he had the bad snap. And the man who came up with a fumble recovery out of Lane Tech, Doug Pennington. He's going to Northern Illinois University. So this has been, uh, for all those prep bowl defeats, at least the early portion of this game has been something for this public league of Chicago to brag about. Now they're bidding to take a two touchdown lead. The ball is on the 28 yard line of the Catholic League. And banging through his dragons and he ran into three or four bodies on that big Catholic League line. I'll tell you one thing, that defense of the Catholic League, you're going to pay the price when you run that football. He was hit by that whole side of that left defensive line. Yes, he ran into quite a few of them. There's Spragans. He has had tough going today. He picked up a couple of yards there. Let's call it actually a gain of one down to the 27-yard line. And a second down and nine. All the teams have to play a 5-2 Oklahoma defense in this game. Max in an offset, as you see. And on the handoff, the Catholic League snowing under Charles Mays out of Bogan as a Catholic League defense. You take a look at them there. Brad Tree out of Weber, number 33. And company. Tree made a great play that time. All he did was come across that line very fast, very quickly, and made an excellent tackle in the backfield. There's a look at Brad Tree going to University of Dubuque in Iowa. We have a timeout in the field now. We're going to stay right here. It'll be up a third down and 13 for the public league. And it, it appears it might be time for the public leaguers to go to the air again, Doug, as they've done dramatically. I think they're, they're going to go to the air many times because they, they can't run against the Catholic League. They, but they can throw we get close with our, Barton back there. We need 13. Okay, if we get close. There's Coach Harden. Stop with Valles, the quarterback who started this game. Probably what he's saying, just throw, throw, throw. <laughs> All right. There are a lot of players. While it is a warm night, uh, there are a lot of players, and I, I'm sure the coaches would like to get everybody in the game at one time or another. They said they're going to try to play them all, but right now they're probably the game is so close and so tight they're trying to keep the players in there. They thought fought for the starting position. There's Frank Stroch, a little worried now because Frank thought he'd be on top of this game right now with that ball control. At this time now, Frank better worry about two people, a kid named Calhoun and one named Washer and one named Barton. Eight minutes and 29 seconds to play in the first half. Look at the public league sideline. Carl White. Ben Ward is the big fellow on the left there. He's the head coach at Marshall High School, serving as offensive line coach for the public league. That offensive line for the public league is Clance Haynes of Marshall at center. Dan Fondren of Dunbar, Joe Bilak of Bogan at the guards, Butch Bresky of Lane, and Patrick Dean of Simeon at the tackles. Third and 13. Down at the 32. Martin. And he just throws it by the intended receiver. And it was Joslin, the man who made the big catch earlier, who couldn't come up with the catch there. Well, they had the pressure on him that time. They came with a blitz to try to stop him from rolling out. If he'd had just a tad, another second, he probably would have made that completion. Barton, four out of nine for 85 yards through the air, 53 yards in one play. And so it is now fourth and 13, and the public league has decided to kick. And again, it'll be Dan Donegan out of Bogan High School who will be back in punt formation. Line of scrimmage is the 31-yard line of the Catholic League. We had a little rain, I know, earlier, at least up in my way in the northwest suburbs, it rained, but uh, dry so far here during the ball game. Right, this would be an excellent time for a fake. They're in a good position to run a fake. Oh, a one-bounce snap, and Bogan fielded it beautifully, and just to get the kickoff, he did something. It is into the end zone. An AstroTurf bounce there. He almost hung it up on the one-yard line. He's lucky he filled it. He filled it like a shortstop, come up with the ball, and it could have been blocked. Dan Donegan of Bogan getting the kick away. Done a pretty good job. Let's get out of Ted Albright. Coach. Ted. We got Douglas Pennington down here, the man that recovered the second fumble. That was a great recovery. You put your team in good field position. Uh, thank you. We're just out there trying to do our best. 
and I just saw the ball pop out, and I just, you know, went for it. That's right. Where are you going to school? I'm going to Northern Illinois. Well, good luck to you up there, okay? Okay, thank and you. And best, best wishes for the rest of this game. All right. All right, yeah, okay, back upstairs. You. And the first play for precious little yardage as uh, Mickey Pruitt made the tackle for the Public League on a running play for the Catholic League that didn't go anywhere, bringing up a second down and 10. Kurt Thomas couldn't find any room that time. Mickey Pruitt got a pretty, pretty good hit on him, stopped him, picked up about two yards. Ball is on the 22-yard line. Bowditch comes to the left, and Thomas Williams goes to the right. Williams of Dima Sherrill and Bowditch out of St. Francis de Sales. They're in the eye. And carrying ahead is Jimmy McDonough out of Gordon Tech getting the ball for the first time. He's going to do Page Junior College. McDonough spun around in there by the Catholic League line. Well, Jimmy McDonough is 5'9", 190 pounds, fullback, and he had a great game that prep ball. In fact, he was the outstanding player. Third and seven, the public league defense stiffening quite a bit as you take a look at them. Jimmy and Johnny Lomax, 53 of Morgan Park in a strong side linebacker now. 24 in the bottom right corner of the picture is Timmy Spencer, the fine defensive back of Robeson. Third down and seven. And a scramble for McCormick. As the ball springs loose, I believe, after the whistle, but it'll be enough for a first down uh, McCormick as he crossed the 35-yard line. McCormick's a Fran Tarkenton. He loves to run that football. You see him right here scrambling out to the left, makes the fake on the play action, doesn't see who he wants, makes up his mind he's going to run, breaks to the wide side of the field, good footwork, has some blocking guys on front of him, makes it, just comes down with the football. You know, amazing, they don't slide as they do in a pro football. Uh, They'll yeah, learn to do that? Sure. <laughs> Give him a couple more years. Those 260-pound defensive ends come down on him. First and 10 for the Catholic League, trailing 6 nothing midway through the second quarter. Ball on the 40-yard line. And again, bounding off the tail of that I formation and coming through is Beninardi of Brother Rice, and he picks up five yards on the play. Joe Beninardi, 6 feet, 190 pounds. He's going to St. Joseph's of Indiana. No St. Joseph's well. Trey got it for many years with the Bears in Rensselaer. And watching Betanari, I like his quickness. And he's good. Looks to me, it could be a good kickoff or punt returner. The man addressing that public league defense was Johnny Lomax out of Morgan Park, number 53. Second and four. Second man through is Curtis Thomas. Thomas of Mendel Catholic carrying the ball up close to midfield. Stopped by Mickey Pruitt of ropes and as Thomas goes off. Curtis Thomas again from that I formation, picking up enough for the first down. Again, the Catholic League aren't changing their game plans. They're coming straight at him from the I formation. They said, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to keep on doing it until we score. Ball control. Under six minutes to play in the first half. First down in midfield for the Chicago Catholic League. They're in a slot formation left in the eye. Ben and Artie. And he is submarined nicely by Brian Bates, the left quarterback from Robeson. Bates going down under on Beninardi and making the tackle. So, gain of only one yard there as the defensive back, the cornerback, 